What's up, guys? Uh, wasn't expecting to make a video like this, uh, but I'm excited to share something I think could be helpful. Um, so not too long ago, we made a video about the Hamsky limb cord attachment bracket. Uh, I was excited about this and in installing it, I thought it would be a pretty easy improvement to my uh, bow setup, specifically the rest. Um, in doing that, I learned a lot uh, just in general about tuning a bow, um, some of the pros and cons of a limb driven rest versus um, cable driven. Uh, and I also am now at a spot where I've uninstalled that bracket. Uh, I think it's something you should consider uh, if you're going to put this bracket on uh, thinking you're going to get an improvement. Just be curious, be observant about some things uh, that might happen in making the switch. And ultimately, you'll know if it's right for you or not. It's $20. It's not the end of the world if it's not for you. Um, but I do want to share this information. I feel like it's been a little bit of a journey. Um, so we'll walk through it. Um, thanks for watching. Just come along and we'll share what we know. And what are we doing? We're rectifying. We have a real problem. Fixing what you broke? Yeah. I guess it doesn't work on my bow. Quick little change before hunt. Can you say you're sorry? <laughs> sorry to everyone who installed this with a VXR. You're subject to some issues, potentially. I was getting some timing issues. So, when I initially installed the bracket, I was excited. This was going to bring kind of a, a little bit streamlined, um, and improved attachment of one of the critical pieces of the bow setup. Um, it, it was just going to improve an attachment that frankly I've done for a few different bows, a few different rests uh, that I'm just not really pleased with. It's, it's awkward to tie a loop around an axle or a yoke or um, a limb. It's just awkward to tie it around something down there that that piece you're tying to wasn't designed to receive a knot or a cord um, so this was exciting for me it was something that i was like this is definitely a product that's meeting a need that in the design of these limb driven rests i'm not seeing the nail hit straight on the head so i was excited um, and in doing that um, i actually in the install video i got some comments from you guys which i thought were really prudent it, it, i'm glad that uh, we were seeing these comments and, and it got me kind of aware of some of the different things I need to look for as I began to shoot this uh, after making this change. But I got comments um, regarding the, you know, just being weary of, of what bows you install that on regarding the travel of the limbs when you release, um, that some newer bows aren't really compatible or liking this attachment style. Uh, for a, There's a lot of reasons, but Namely, um, the newer Matthews bows like the V3, V3X, VXR, like I'm probably, I'm going to guess I'm going to go to say the Phase 4, um, there's, there's more travel associated with that limb when you release, uh, which kind of changes some of the dynamics of the rest. Um, but anyway, getting back to that, the comments were good. I was thinking about this and being observant as I began to shoot. And actually, when I installed it originally, I had the dampener and the spring on the Hamsky Trinity Rest installed. I immediately, I immediately was thinking, I don't know if we need both of those. Um, 
and I, I took the dampener off. Um, after I, I had done some shooting and I was noticing that um, as my arrows, as my arrows were passing through the rest, um, my veins were coming into contact with the rest um, cage on the Trinity. And I had, a, I had white veins at the time and there were black markings on them and there were rubs on the inside of the rest, just very evident that I was getting this contact. And I began to even notice the sound of it. Um, it wasn't every shot, <clears throat> but it was enough to where I didn't like that that could bring some inconsistency to my setup. I shot that actually um, for a couple of days. And after that, after taking the dampener off, I noticed that I was getting, the contact seemed to be alleviated, but I was getting erratic flight, you know, shooting 40, 50 yards downrange after getting a release. I could see my arrow kind of start to tail off to a side or high. I, I just, I was having erratic flight and it was evident um, that I just wasn't getting a clean flight. So as the, as the arrow is, is coming through, something was causing it to turn in the air as it traveled downrange. Um, and that was after I had removed the dampener. So I just have a standard setup um, that you'd install with the Hamski Trinity and then this limb cord attachment bracket on my Matthews VXR. Fast forward a couple weeks, um, we're actually out hunting um, for, for late season doe. Um, and I had actually made a video where even though with the erratic flight, um, I was picking out with this new spot hog fast Eddie XL site. I was picking out the, the site tape and I had been, I would, I, I was getting groups that were acceptable for me out to 60, 70 yards. And it was enough to feel confident about picking a tape. Um, the tape and from that video, you guys can watch it from that video. I wasn't getting great downrange, um, performance. And I, I'm, I'm wondering if a little bit of that was due to some of these issues I was having, uh, just with the arrow being, you know, in flight erratically and changing positions as it's going down. Um, but regardless, on the hunt, I actually decided, you know what, the limb cord attachment is too suspicious. Um, I want to go back to just a standard attachment. Uh, and I had done some reading online and actually found some some input from Hamsky Engineering um, that would help clarify maybe some of these issues and basically bring back the recommendation of for these Matthews newer bows, so V3, V3X, um, even VXR like I have, all these newer bows, the recommendation for best performance is two to two and a half inches down the limb. That's where the attachment should be. So what you can see here now is I've attached back to the limb. Um, I've got to take the bracket off and frankly, I'm going to try to sell it <laughs> um, because it just, it wasn't working for me with this bow and this rest. Um, but now after I moved there, um, my flight cleared up. Um, the, the arrow was beginning to fly true and just through watching um, playback, on the shot and arrow flight, I'm, I just I have a cleaner flight now, um, solely from moving that attachment point down to that recommended spot. So Hamski, uh, thank you for the recommendation. Um, I was excited about this bracket. I think this bracket could still work for people with this bow, um, with these newer bows. It, there's a lot of factors that go into it um, for you to have good or bad flight. Um, it could work. Obviously, that's why they sell the bracket. Um, I just, as a heads up, I see a lot of videos from very prominent archery authorities where that bracket's being installed on new bow setups. So V3X, Phase 4, all these new Matthews bows, etc. are just getting this bracket in the shop. That's just, it's being set up that way. Um, so be observant as you as you shoot, uh, I just would stay curious about that bracket attachment. Um, it, for me, it, it was, it was a downgrade. It changed, it changed some of my flight characteristics to my arrow, um, helped me learn a lot, but I, I'm not sure I'll, I'll be it a nice, clean attachment, a good solution for the componentry of a Matthews bow. Uh, I'm not sure it's a, an improvement for everyone. So let's get back to what I learned. 
Um, this was this was something that I think could be really frustrating if you're if you're not in tune with all the different um, tuning points on a bow um, as far as getting clean flight, um, knowing how to adjust your sight for things. It, this is just another variable that might not be kind of on the forefront of your mind. Um, the things I learned. So, and a lot of this, I'm, a lot of this I'm just going to paraphrase from Hamsky. Um, ideally, as your arrow is in the rest and at release, your arrow is guided for 50 to 70% of the passage through the rest. Um, 50 to 70%. That's the ideal range that your rest is holding your arrow before it snaps down. So 50%, I mean, we could, we could call that, you know, half the length of the arrow, it's up, snaps down. Somewhere between 50 and 70%. That's the ideal thing. Um, for me, I had contact um, at first when I had the dampener and the spring. Uh, um, the thought there is, is that too much guidance can cause contact of your veins or your arrow coming to the rest, um, which is what I had. That's exactly what I had. So I think when I had the dampener and this spring, there's just so much slack and play in this cable with the rest that as the arrow is passing through, um, that, that rest just stayed up too long, which for one reason or another impacted the arrow to have contact as it's passing through. Um, now the other thing to keep in mind, I took the dampener off and the thought is, is if you don't support the arrow uh, for long enough, so if you're less than 50%, um, you can get erratic flight. Essentially, the thought there is, is that the rest comes down and the arrow is unsupported before it reaches a speed where it can support itself. So you get weird and erratic flight downrange. So I think I caught both examples with my process. When I had the dampener, I was over 70% supported, probably causing contact to the rest. And I was below 50% supported. Um, whenever I took the dampener off, I had erratic flight. So the solution was simply putting this attachment back to um, a spot two and a half inches down the limb, which now that I have clean clean flight is probably landing me somewhere in the 50 to 70 percent support range. Uh, all right, so again, this was my experience. I still love the Hamski rest. Um, I like the idea of the bracket a ton. I wish it would work. I wish I could just drill holes in my limb and put the bracket further down where it needs to be. Um, I, I want it to work because it's an elegant solution, but it didn't work for me. Uh, I think there's a lot to learn in the process um, in getting um, it to work or troubleshooting your bow. So I'm thankful for that. But otherwise, this could work for you. I'm not saying don't do it, but thought it would be nice to follow up in a video, explain some of the things I learned, uh, and just overall make sure that everyone is a little bit more curious about um, attaching that bracket and just give you some things to look for uh, as you as you shoot once you've had that installed so either way thanks for watching uh, we appreciate you guys watching the videos and the comments again the comments on the first video were what got me aware of, of some of these things to look out for so that was awesome um, I wouldn't change it I wouldn't go back and change it or do it a different way uh, I learned a lot uh, and and at this point in time no bracket no brackets best for me. So I'll let you guys explore it yourself. Again, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.